time, you know the time, you know the time It's time for me to run away Remember all the old time, the music's on all day We'll be going down with my CJ The white on my sticks, the baggy chains Hey, welcome to Little Easy, all right, sorry <laughs> was easy. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Sailors Podcast. That's it's your also Sefa, it's your Toko Atu, and man, we have a special guest for you guys, Massy Guy himself, ladies and gentlemen, Devita Lee. What's up, Toko? What's up, Toko? What's up? Thank That's you for having me. Good. Yes, sir. Well, we had to, man. We had to after all the 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 shoulders that you broke in our preseason um, games <laughs> and stuff, bro. We had to, Uzo. We had to. How's it been, bro? Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Yeah. Uh, it's been long. cruising along, family time, and uh, yeah, yeah. Because you're in, uh, you're in Japan, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. In Japan at the moment, just about to start our season in two weeks' yes, time. So excited. How's for that. the? How's the? Like, do you guys have any lockdowns over there? Like, with or was it pretty much open now in Japan? Oh, it's always been pretty much open. Yeah. Um, well, when the pandemic happened uh, yeah they yeah. went into lockdown but then i think they just decided that just live with it actually just live with it so they, right they just did that open, <laughs> you just all you need to do is wear a mask and yo oh. you're all good uh, japan yeah. just did that hey it is what it is <laughs> yeah, yeah honestly it's honestly uh they they wear masks and stuff yeah like anyway so yeah I think yeah, they, they're used to all the stuff, but are, are you, the, are you grateful for being there? The in the pandemic, yo, <laughs> and it's full, as we know. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, is what it, is. it is what it is. It is what it is. Are you are you grateful for being there though? Like watching NZ going into lockdown in and out. That's <laughs> uh, sad though, eh? Like with our families by like, the same time, you're the like, family and stuff. Yeah. But, oh, honestly, watching you on. Um, yeah. Stories and stuff back at home. I just feel sorry for them, man. Yeah, being in lockdown for how long now? It's just Yo. I wouldn't want to be there at the moment. Yeah. Right, but it's yeah, it's that lockdown. Like, I don't mind the lockdown, but it's going in and out. Like, you think you're you're out, and then next minute you come back. Oh, no oh. lockdown. So like, why don't you guys just stick to your guys' countries that he's in and leave us alone, eh? <laughs> Ox, rub the hot ox. It hurts, bro. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts, man. It hurts. Uh, How's preseason, Togo? It's good. Keeps a running. Keeps um, a running, bro. Like, what's the difference for like Japan preseason? Wow, well, Suntory preseason and like. Oh, uh, rugby ones here the, doing the it. The big difference. The big difference in Japan is uh, so we're a company, so oh, we have yeah. um, our rugby players are workers, so. Oh, okay. oh wow. Work half of half of the day and then train half the day. So, oh. Yeah, so it's buzzy, man. Um, when I came over, I thought uh, preseason was going to be hard just yeah. from uh, being in, back in New Zealand. But when I rocked up, and I see come on Monday, he started like 12.30 in the afternoon. And then Tuesday, like all days, yeah. most days are half days because yeah. literally yeah, they're all workers. And, you know, you kind of look at it and you're like, right, you see these guys, the workers and uh, as players, you yeah. see them, you know, they work ethic and yeah, you know, like you feel for them because yeah, they're rugby players but also workers at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. I never knew that. That's that's fuzzy. Uh, but you know, for you it would have been a little bit of like a was it a culture shock for you? Like moving to Japan, like coming from New Zealand. Yeah, it was it was pretty interesting at the start um, yeah. coming in and seeing what it was like here, but I'd come here before for a week mm. and I kind of enjoyed the culture. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the, the nicest people you ever meet. I um, heard, man. So respectful. Yeah. And, you know, just really welcoming. Eh? So it was, it was kind of good coming here and uh, just meeting everybody and uh, coming into a good team, which was good. Eh? Yo, oh, let's dig into some more, bro. Let's let, yeah, let's bro, get into yeah. it. Well, and I think um, where we're gonna start, bro, is is, is the humble messy and, and where you <laughs> were brought up in, bro, and um, how it was like, obviously with family. I know you've got Lua and and Mussy as well. Like, what was that kind of 
um, competitiveness within the family growing up. Uh, but how was that life growing up in a Tongan um, household with brothers? Um, and what was that like for you? It was, uh, it was, it was pretty mean, eh? Um, yeah. I just remember when we were young, we did, uh, I remember my mum and dad, they, they worked during the day. Yeah. And uh, us kids, me and my brothers and my sister, we used to stay home by ourselves. But yeah. on our street, like all the kids, there was a lot of kids around. So we would all, um, we'd all come out on the street and like play touch rugby on the street and mm. play heaps of games. But you know, um, my mum and dad told us we were not allowed outside. Yeah. So like, <laughs> we'd go outside knowing what time they finished work. And yeah. Sometimes they'd come early and it's funny, yeah. but everyone on the street, all the kids on the street, we, we had each other's backs. So yeah, yeah, yeah. some of the kids will be on top of the hill. There's a little hill. And because uh, when we used to live on Cedar Heights, yeah, uh, there's a little little hill that you can see the cars coming down. Yeah, and yeah. once um, some of the, the our friends, our next door neighbors and stuff, uh, saw the car, they'll tell us, "Hey, hey, your mom and dad." So we'll run back inside, run back inside, and act like we weren't doing anything. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes yeah. Uh, we got caught, and when we got caught, Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> in a cool way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and um, did you ever feel like, um, well, growing up like and then playing outside, did, did you is that where you built the, I guess, the um, passion for, for footy or sports while being outside with your friends and stuff like that? Yeah, definitely. Honestly, uh, I, I love playing outside. Um, I hated staying inside. Well, we yeah. all hated staying inside, but just uh, um, playing against your friends and, you know, just... Yeah. Trying to beat them and you know, yeah. even playing against my brothers and stuff, they'd be on the other team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Competitive and it was just fun because there was something to do. Yeah. Um, with, there was no PlayStation. Well, we couldn't afford PlayStation back then, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd just keep a stick and act like it was a gun. <laughs> back then, man. Yeah. All yeah. that stuff, you know, so. 100%. It was actually really good, uh, I think. Uh, that gave me my passion to uh, love sports and then. My dad taking me, uh, me and my brothers to um, to our local Messi rugby club yeah. uh, to get play rugby there, and that's where it all started. Eh? Me, me, so, me, and, and shout out to uh, Messi rugby. Uh, you know, being a really great club out, out in Harbour and whatnot, and representing the West West. Mm-hmm. But um, also, the goal like um, obviously coming from Messi, did you ever um, know in your heart like? Yeah, bro, I'm going to be a professional rugby player. Like, that was your drive. Or was there any other kind of career pathway that you were, like, kind of heading towards? Uh, no, I think um, when I started uh, when I started high school, um, I was playing, just really wanted to get into the sports academy. Yeah. And that was the, the big one because I remember my brother, my two brothers, they – they wanted to go to sports academy as well. Yeah. But they didn't make it in. Yeah, so yeah. they were telling me when um when I was uh, like trialing or uh, trying to get in, they're like, oh no, it's hard. It's only for like sports <laughs> people, like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. guys, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then I got in and I was like, oh sheeks, this is me. Yeah. And then it was under fifteens, it was like under f- when you're year nine, trying to make the under fifteens A is yeah. like Massive, yeah, yeah. So like then he's on now. Like this guy's pretty good, yeah. And same again. My brothers, my brothers were playing like third grade and second yeah, fifteen yeah, and yeah. stuff. So it's like, oh man, nah, that team's hard as to me. Yeah, yeah. And once yeah. I made it, I was like, hey, what's going on? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 this yeah. is mean. Like yeah, yeah, playing yeah. with all my friends and stuff. Yeah, but there was, I don't think there was ever a time where I thought, oh man, um. I'm gonna be a rugby player. I just mm. it was all about enjoying, enjoying yeah. and playing with my friends in high school, and just having all the support from my family and my brothers and daddy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, bro, because I, I can, I think when I think back um, to Messi, mate, and and you coming through the ranks, you're kind of the the guy, you know, the guy out of Messi. Um, Messi the guy, high, right? the guy, like, like, nah, the harbor, harbor, not Messi, harbor. 
Oh, yeah, or even Harbour. <laughs> but, like, I mean, like, you know, coming out of Messi, I remember, you know, um, you're the big talk, you know, like the, the winger, uh, mm-hmm. the 11, the number 11 jersey, um, and doing that, um, coming through that process. What was that like, bro, with, like, because you got a bit of limelight, bro, while you were still in school, right? Like, there was already the talks of you, like, you know, NZ schools, um, NZ 20s, um, mm-hmm. contracts and, and whatnot. So, like, what was that like being the guy at Massey where, like, there was talks for, like, bro, you want to, you know, you have a chance for NZ schools and NZ 20s. Like, did you, did you kind of, uh, when you look back, like, did you take it all in or were you just, like, going with the flow pretty much? Uh, it's definitely going with the, with the flow, but because I uh, remember there was a lot of guys – from Messi, who who were before me, the older guys, yeah, like the uh, the PC brothers, mm. um, yeah, yeah, and the two Rocky brothers, yeah, and um, I think when uh, when I started, I remember going to Messi sevens, yeah, um, all the all the like old guys, like all the all the PC brothers and two were there, and yeah. um, yeah. you know, just to be running around playing like playing alongside them mm. or training with them you know it's yeah, all yeah. we're buzzing on me and all the young guys because mm. we're just used to being going to school and just playing on the rugby field but then yeah like they ask us oh come we should just come and have a little jam yeah and yeah rub shoulders with them and because my favorite player my 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 number one idol was uh anthony Turavaki. Yeah. Because he went, he went to Messi. Yeah. Uh, he played for North Harbour. Went on to play for the Blues. Then he played for the All Blacks. You know, and that's yeah. those are all the things that like I, I went to Messi. Mm. Uh, I wanted to play for Harbour. I wanted to play for the Blues, and then I also wanted to play for the All Blacks. Yeah. So he was like a he was like honestly. Every time I'd watch him play, he was definitely the guy that he was my idol and I aspired to be, you know? Yeah. No, that's me, man. And and shout out to um, the Tutavaki brothers and the PC brothers. You, you, you well, the end of your high school career um, and there was talks there. What, what teams were, or what was the first team that you kind of um, got yourself involved in, which was at a, like an elite level? Um, I'd say uh, New Zealand Sevens. Yeah. Mm. Um, when I was still in high school, I remember um, getting called to go down to the to a training camp down at yep. the Mount. Mm. So I was like, oh, what, "What's what's going yeah. on here? Like, I'm still in school." Yeah. yeah. And um, so we rocked up. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, I don't know if it's funny or not. <laughs> nah, nah, that's gonna be funny. It's gonna be funny. <laughs> so uh, we rocked up, and um, it was me. I remember it was me, uh, a guy called Golio from uh, Canterbury. Yeah. Uh, Yopu uh, Yopu, and uh, Ulus Halolo. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, we rocked up, and we did a. Uh, we had to do a beat test. <laughs> And uh, we did the beep test, and uh, Willis, he got, uh, he pulled out, I think it was a, I can't remember the exact number, it was about an eight, and like, that is really, really bad. Yeah. So like, he pulled out, and so once we finished, all the guys, we hopped in the in the van to head back to, to our hotel, yeah. Willis had to run home, because of <laughs> oh. uh, we oh, had to run home because his beep test was the lowest oh, ever. Dang. So, so then, shout out to Willis. Shout out to Willis. <laughs> those, those were the days. Yeah. Now, now he's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing really yeah. well, man. But we'll just we'll never, we'll never uh, forget that day. Yeah. yeah. What was yours, bro? Fourteen, fifteen. I was it? Oh. 
I wasn't too far off, but at least I wasn't last team. <laughs> <laughs> at least you didn't run home either. <laughs> yeah, at least I didn't run as long as I was in, as long as I was in there, man. You made the man. <laughs> that was me, bro. How was that experience, though? Like, um, I guess rubbing shoulders with, obviously, uh, with Willis and the boys, but maybe some older folks, even team management. Like, how was that? Did anyone take you under your under their wing, bro, to like kind of help you throughout the tr- um, transition? No, nah, uh, to be honest, it was a uh, it was a long, long time ago, and I can't. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, that's only the thing I could remember about the camp. Yeah. Mm. they because it was just all about Phillips. Seven's days were. Uh, <laughs> hey, the seven's days were. We heard some stories, fun. man, of like the yeah. the trainings that yeah, you guys bro. would do at the mount. Yeah, so. I'm happy I only did that one camp. That one, <laughs> yeah. camp that one camp, they it was like kind of a like a, just to show us what it was like to be in a camp, you know? Mm. Oh, like right. What it's like to would would do like a fitness session. We'll do we only do half of it. Then we'll do half of it, then he'll stop and explain, oh yeah, we normally do ten of those. And mm. like after that, we'll go do something else and go, yeah. We normally do eight of those, so it wasn't. That's why it wasn't too bad. That, yeah, that, yeah, that one yeah. we went to, but oh, then when you hear the other stories, it's just yeah. <laughs> next level. That's no, awesome. thank that's awesome. that's no, thank you. That's awesome. No, thank you. Now that's mean, bro. Like, would you say though? Would you say like you know, looking back at your high school rugby, would you say that that would be like one of the most fun rugby times you've ever had in your life? If you look back at your high school rugby, yeah, definitely the most enjoyable rugby, and just because I was able to yeah. um, play with my friends, yeah. you know, and mm. honestly, Messi was like, I love playing for Messi, especially first yeah. thing. Yeah, I really wanted to beat um, all the, especially Westlake and Rosman. Yeah, yeah those are your rivals, eh? Those, yeah, those yeah. guys, yeah. But yeah, it was that was the biggest thing about it, playing with my friends yeah. and um yeah. then going uh to Messi Rugby Club and also yeah. just carrying the carrying uh, the friendship on to there yeah. and just playing again with them. That's um, yeah. that's me, bro. Yeah, you're totally right, man. There's nothing like just even those early games when you're playing like you know under you know the 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 junior grades you get yeah. to wake up early those early games you're like yo this yeah. is mean and then some guys uh would play the the morning games and would play the the, the yeah, afternoon yeah, yeah, games yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and it's just with your friends it's just like yeah. oh that's the saturdays and then you finish up you go home you look at your bruises i was like yo me oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this man. is the days and i think it's good because like you can kind of have fun with it and it's not serious. Yeah. Like it mm-hmm. is serious, but not to until you know, like now when it, once you're a professional, it's all about it's like it's like yeah. a job, you know. Yeah. You have to do this, you yeah. have to do that. But like mm-hmm. we're like eating whatever you want and <laughs> no. you know, yeah. doing whatever we want. So you know, mm-hmm. as long as we're having fun, that was yeah. the best part of it. That's the one. Hey, if you're a young athlete that's listening right now, you're still in high school, enjoy your high school rugby, man. Because yeah, once your high school's done, you can only repeat once. You know this from experience. <laughs> <laughs> yep, once or twice. If you're I lucky, three times. Too. <laughs> and then you're gone. Months. You're gone. Yeah. You can't, you can't it, celebrate but... your 21st in high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's me, bro. And then you got, um, you were um, blessed enough to, to make it into the NZ school team. And uh, we heard that there's a record there that, that you hold. This is in the schools of the oh, 20s. The schools. Most, schools or 20s? 20, the most tries. 20s, 20s. Oh, 20s. 20s. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. But, you know, when you made that NZ school, you know, it would have been, um, you know, how was that feeling? Even the reaction from your family? How did your family take that news? Because it would have been a massive thing for your family. Yeah, it was, uh, it was massive, eh? just to just to think that uh, I could make that level. Yeah. Um, and especially for my family, this, my, my, my wider family, uh, they've always supported me from the get-go. And, mm. uh, you know, there's been my cousins that have tried to make it and we've all supported them, you know, and once they get to a, 
to a, a big milestone, we all support them and congratulate them. And yeah. Like uh, when those uh, moments happen, like I just sit there and think, oh man, it'll be yeah. cool if like you know, one day, hopefully that could be me. Yeah. And I think that was, that was one of the times when, when I made schools and mm. all my family, like, you know, all supported me, congratulated me, had a big yeah. feed and just, yeah. those are yeah. the times that I, I cherish because nothing beats family and yeah, uh, man. Uh, honestly, it's just happy for um, my mom and dad, yeah, and, you know, yeah. all the sacrifice they put and you know, yeah. taking me to training <laughs> yeah. and even, even my uncles, you know, yeah. Yeah. All, all of them taking their time out mm. when my, my parents go to work to come yeah. take me to training and sit there, wait for two hours to train. Yeah. And then they come take me back home and they got to go to work, sleep for work. So all those sacrifices, you know, yeah. just think back. And look at that. Look back and think. Yeah, no, it was all worth it. Eh? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's those sacrifices that us, you know, at, at that age would never see. Because eh? yeah, yeah, we'd yeah. just be like, man, I wait for mom and dad to go to work so we can just go, yeah, you know, man. hang out. And then you you grow up and you're like, damn, man, yeah, like, yeah. they wake up that early just to get my lunch and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's cool, bro. Um. We see it now, like with high school, high school rugby, um, they, you know, they get a lot of camera time, you know, a lot of TV time as well. Um, Unreal. Like, you know, and, and that was that, that whole Land Rover Rugby First with Dean was kind of introduced and in like, because I finished in 211 and they were yeah. like starting that, like 211, 210 to 11 uh, was when they were <laughs> starting to, um, you know, bring up First with Dean Rugby. Um, yeah. Did you, because... What year did you finish, Docs? I finished in uh, 2013. Yeah. Was it like, was it, was it like a whole new experience for you? Like, you know, having to prepare, like, dang, there's going to be cameras around me. And, you know, as a young athlete, like, were you excited? Or were you nervous? How was that? I think um, at that age, uh, we're all excited. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and the, all the first team boys, because... Mm. Honestly, it used to be all the the Auckland schools. Yeah, all yeah, of them yeah. used to get all the, uh, the TV tie. Yeah, and, like we'd always watch them, and we had there's like one one game we had that was on Land uh, Rover or whatever. Yeah, yeah. they come. Yeah. They came on TV, mm. and that's like our whole school was there watching. Yeah, um, yeah. it was a main experience. Eh? Yeah, it was, we're just thinking like. We, uh, our, um, our whole school got like cheerleaders and stuff just for their game. I'm like, yeah, hey, better relax, man. <laughs> nah, you know how you can tell the boys are excited. It's on game day. There's the fresh fade. Fresh fade. <laughs> yeah, I have to. I was, I was in that, that morning. I was at the barbers. Yo, <laughs> fresh fade, man. I have, I to. have to, bro. Nah, that's mean, bro. Like, and that you know, the only reason why I say that is because you know we look at um, and you know the 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 young athletes now in first with Dean, I think they're used to it now, which is awesome. Yeah. You know, they're used to the TV time, they're used to the reporters coming up, and we see the even the professionalism that even these young athletes are having that we kind of missed out in that time because we were yeah. just too focused on I just want to get on TV. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Shout out to all the coaches and all the teachers out there that are training those young athletes yeah, uh, in that area of the game. Hey. That's cool. You um, you left school and um, got into the twenties. Um, you know, campaign. How was that? Um, obviously, how we mentioned earlier, uh, you set a new record at the time uh, with the most tries, and there's a few highlights that we've watched this, but unreal, man. And like, how was that? Playing with, um, of, of obviously, uh, I think there was a year you played with DMAC, you played with um, Richie Moonga. Um, how was that squad um, representing your country also? Um, wow. You know, and, and, and I think playing in front of your, there was, there was a, was a, I don't I'm not sure, I think it was the World Cup here eh, in, in, in New Zealand that you guys played, South Africa yeah, at the um, yeah, at Harbour A. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, how was that like playing in front of your family as well? Like going through all of that kind of um, journey? No, it's, it's definitely a dream come true. And, and it's, always, it's always an honor to 
pay for a New Zealand side, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, look back and um, see all the players that I've played with yeah. um, in those New Zealand teams. Yeah. You know, to now all on the world stage and then you know, being like a lot of guys uh, some of the best players in the world now, you know. Yeah, and yeah. just to think that I was able to play with them. Yeah. And um, you know, it was amazing and to have one of the competition and competitions in New Zealand yeah. uh, was also a massive bonus because I was able to have uh, my family there and yeah. um, yep. and also friends to come and support and watch. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, those those are like some of the best years of, of rugby that I've enjoyed and Wow, lovely! Yeah. That was awesome, bro. You're unreal through that through that campaign, and mm. and like um, we you know take our hat off to you and, and the boys and um what you guys went through. Uh, you you entered the, the Super Rugby um platform at a young age as well, um, you know, and you got to play alongside um some legends of the game and especially some legends um in the Auckland region, um, mm. you know, the likes of. Um, Giving me a lamo and whatnot. Um, how was that? Um, like you know, with just transitioning into that um, Super Rugby, um, being young, um, having a lot of, I guess, uh, expectation um, on your shoulders. How did you deal with that? And at a young age, yeah, it was honestly. Well, sometimes when I look back at it and uh, to think. Um, I actually played with these players, yeah. with the likes of, like you said, Kim Nealami, but also you know Charles Piotel and oh. you know, George Moala and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just uh, sometimes I can't believe it. Yeah. Um, and I don't, sometimes I think oh, uh, I was honestly so blessed at that time, mm-hmm. but um, you know, being around um. My first year, Frank Halai, he looked after me. Um, yeah. He's my buddy and he's the one that looked after me. So, you know, he took me under his wing. Yeah. And um, just going to training every day yeah. and uh, just being able to train every day and, like, yeah. to get, you know, as a job. Yeah, 100%. And to go see these these players and to be able to run around with them was honestly like mm. every, every day was like a dream come true, right? Yeah. yeah nice. and, um, Especially as a kid, eh, Docs? Yeah. Like you're like, a kid and you're just running around getting paid to do what you love. Yeah. You know so what I mean? Like, and yeah. It's kind of, um, there's a lot of times where it was like, I was real nervous, especially at trainings because you don't want to, you don't want to yeah. like, talk the ball. <laughs> you don't want to do something silly, you know, yeah. because you got the, all these old guys who do something yeah. wrong. Hey, yeah, yeah, come yeah. On, man. Like, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's, it's just thinking back. It thinking back now is just yeah, definitely mm. uh, a dream come true. Yeah, uh, just mm. being able to go out there and rub shoulders and learn off mm. these these amazing players. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a few young guys. There's like, there's Lolangi was there as well. <laughs> the ledge. The ledge. Yeah, Lolangi was there. All <laughs> well, the young guys, me and Lolangi. Yeah. Uh, Did he tell you his Kasten stories? Like Lolangi. When, when he... <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear this Kasten story. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Leave this Kasten stories for Kasten. Let's <laughs> <laughs> oh, crack up. No, nah, that's me, bro. Then, um, you, obviously, you played played a few, uh, I guess, uh, one of few seasons at, at the Blues, and then you made a switch to go down, uh, down south, uh, to the cold. Um, mm-hmm. what came about with that, bro? Like, what was the process behind it? Was it like a new change, or was it a uh, offering of a new contract? Um, how did that come about? Because obviously, we, you know, we knew. Oh well, we thought that Auckland was just gonna be your super rugby team for you. You know, you want to be here for a, so whenever you want to leave. But for a wee while. Yeah. Obviously you, you went down to the cold. What what made what made you choose 
um, the Leiden and the Highlanders. Um, and what was kind of the, the story behind that, bro? Let's get it. Here we go. Let's, let's get it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what we love to do on here is to promote not only our local business, but even our DJs out there. Let's ladies and gentlemen, go. DJ Vils, bro. If you got any functions, wedding, birthdays, even after school stuff or whatever. After parties. If you need after parties, if you need a DJ, hit them up. DJ Bills, based out of West Auckland, Calston. Hit them up. We'll put us at down below. Doko, has he ever DJ for one of your guys' functions? He sure <laughs> has, my bro. Sure he has. has. What do you reckon? Yeah. Out of 10? 10 out of 10, mate. Eh? 10 out of 10. Let's go. Shout out to the Toko DJ Bills. You're doing amazing stuff in our community and out. So, ladies and gentlemen, check them out. Let's go. We'll put us at down here. Let's go. Chicka, 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 chicka. <laughs> um, so, uh, my, my three years was up. Yeah. Oh, coming to an end. And um, uh, the high performance manager, he told he told uh he told me oh you you're gonna get resigned. Yeah. And I was like, Oh yeah, sweet. So I was like, Oh yeah, I definitely I'm definitely coming back. Yeah. And so a couple of months later down the track, um my agent call my agent calls me and tells me, um, like they put a pull or like they put my contract on hold. Mm. Yeah. Like they didn't know like they didn't know if they're gonna sign me. That's yeah. how I took it. Yeah, and they said, oh, no, no, they, they put your the contract on hold. And I said, hey. Mm. So, they, so apparently um, it was because that's when they were about to sign Sonny Bill Williams. Um, and so if they, they signed Sonny Bill Williams, um, uh, all the, uh, the spots were going to be taken for, for the midfield. Yeah, yeah. So they need to push someone to the wing. So that means I wouldn't be able to get re-signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh. Oh, yeah, sweet ass, all good. Mm, and then yeah. my agent called me and he told me, he asked me, oh, so if there was um, if there was another club that you if, that you wanted to go to, mm. uh, like where would it be? And I yeah. just told him, uh, I think it'll be uh, the Highlanders. And then he asked me, oh, why why the Highlanders? And I just yeah. told him because um, uh, Malakai and uh, Waisaki and Naholo, they're both at the Blues. Yeah, and yeah. they transitioned down. So Highlanders and obviously the the careers just yeah went through the roof. Both became All Blacks, and so yeah. I was like, oh, you know, there could be something that that I could do. Yeah, yeah. So um, the next day he calls me again and tells me, oh, uh, if you're interested, um, they're keen to have you. I was Yo, like, oh me. Oh what? Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, they're keen to have you. So um. Tony Brown gave me a call that night. He said, oh, can you, he wants to have a chat with you. So yeah. he gave me a call and we just had a talk and asked me if, like, I wanted to, if I wanted to go down to the Highlanders, what was the reason? And I told him the exact same reason. And, um, I think I thought it was just going to be good for me. Yeah. When I made the decision, I just thought it would be good for me because um, it would take me out, out of my comfort zone. I knew yeah. being at the police, um I was, I was real comfortable there. I've been there for, yeah. I've been there for, it was going to be my third year. So, you know, I knew if I, I needed a new challenge or yeah. like if I wanted to try to push myself, I'd go somewhere else. So then yeah. I just decided that I'll move down south to the Highlanders and went down and mm. really Eight. enjoyed my time down there. And, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Docs. Highlanders, you were great down there, mate. You were yeah, great. great. You bro. were great. Yeah, that was um, you know, and and like for you, we we talk about this um, you know, it's it's sort of you know, it's a heavy subject that we, you know, we love to discuss this with our different guests. You know, when it comes to uh, the mental health of the game, you know, because a lot of, you know, most of the audience that watch the game, you know, and whether it be live or whether it be through you know TV and stuff like that. The only thing they see is your performance on a Saturday or Friday or Thursday or Sunday. That's the only thing they see. No one sees the training, you know, obviously the team training and your own training that you do. 
and then having to go home and you know now that you're a father you play that father role you know having to take off the rugby hat putting on the father hat, you know things like that and at times we you know we don't understand how that could be your mental health can be affected by that you know and we share and you're sharing about how you moved you got the news with the blues and the highlanders you know that move and being a young kid how did you cope with that mentally how did you how did, how did you manage that or was there anyone that you started like reaching out to that to to help you within that 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 decision and that and that moment in your journey i think um like being young at that time kind of mental health was honestly like i didn't know anything about mental health yeah, yeah. i just thought it was normal you know i yeah, just thought yeah. like this is normal like yeah. I'm still young, you know, mm. and like now I can see differently uh, what mental health is and what what it was yeah. like because you know back then some thoughts you know when I was training and playing yeah um, so like thoughts going through my mind like when when I'm playing I'm just thinking oh you know am I am I good enough to be here and mm, all yeah. those kind of thoughts like me thinking back then like. I'm just thinking that's just normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now thinking like, now I, uh, thinking back at it, it's just like, it's, it's a, it's kind of like, it was me having anxiety yeah. about my own rugby like career and all that yeah. stuff, and that's it. That's why, I'm, like, all these rugby or all these like athletes reaching out about mental yeah. health, like it's, it's massive. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sure it's gonna help a lot of kids, um, or like kids coming through their age grades and stuff like that, realize yeah. what they're going through. Mm. And I think that's the best thing about it that they can learn at a young age. Yeah. yeah. And so they can just learn from it and actually get help. And I think good thing is like I had I had good uh, support team as mm. yeah. my family and. Mm. Um, my friends who I could go and uh, talk to and you know just going having my brothers you know just go and yeah. muck around with them and just tell them oh, yeah. 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 they have a good game and they, you, yeah. you know you kind of joke around yeah, so yeah, yeah. You know, those are the good things about it you know you can kind of have a laugh about it feel yeah. a, a bad game or a good game but now you just realize it's, it's at the end of the day it's just rugby. Yeah, and yeah. It's bigger things than just rugby. Than, you know, having having my having my daughter and having my family and my my wife. Yeah. You know, these bigger things you come home to. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah. You, know, you go out there and you work, you train, have fun. You know, but at the end of the day, these yeah. bigger things in life. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. It's 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 funny because you know I don't know about you but uh, you know for me personally I struggle to you know if I look at my dad you know I struggle to share some of the things that I had that I really wanted to share with my dad because there's that 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 poly where you know the Pacific was hey you didn't talk yeah. to dad about that sort of stuff you know like when I it, it, you know thing like anxiety and depression and stuff because yeah. there's that stereotype that poly guys poly men are supposed to be tough like mm. if you cry you're weak. You yeah. know, when you show, you know, when you're sad, you show weakness and you can't show weakness. You can't be vulnerable in a house like that. But we see it now, like a lot of Pacific men are now speaking up because back then we couldn't do that. We couldn't, yeah. we couldn't speak up about feelings. We couldn't speak because it, it, it made us look weak. You know, and if you look at yourself, like if you would give an advice to a young athlete that's coming up now, you know, they're struggling with that. They're struggling with having that conversation with their father or, or whoever that, that, that person is that they're close to. Like, what would be your advice to them, like to a young athlete coming up now? I think it's just finding someone that you can trust, ask for yeah. help, mm-hmm. you know, and you can trust. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like you said, it's hard going to a Polynesian father. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, you walk up, if you walk up, yeah. it's a bit, <laughs> a little bit sad. Or, 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 yeah. You're going to get slapped around the ears, you know? Oh, you get and, the... 
Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. they wash the dishes. <laughs> but, hey, the thing is, that's that's the way they were brought up, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't change that. Yeah. That's, that's that's honestly the other way. Yeah. The only thing you can do now is, you know, teach the young ones now. Yeah, and yeah. Learn from and um, give them um, advice from the experiences that we have we have all yes. been through. And yeah, that's the big thing. Um, even now, we're like. Yes, you could you could go up and yeah hey, ask for like ask for help and stuff, but yeah. because we're a little bit older, if, if I was yeah, a young yeah, kid, yeah. If I was younger, my young yeah. back in my young days, yeah, when doing the same thing, it's just a different story. <laughs> I think I yeah. think them living in New Zealand now, mm. uh, they kind of understand the the kind of ways that that when yeah. you come home and. They yeah. see the ways that mm. um, we live. Yeah, in this, I mean, it's yeah. a lot different to how they were brought yeah. up. They, mm. Yeah, when they when they start telling you the stories of yeah. how they had no lunch and used to walk to school with their fears. My forty, alrighty, alrighty. <laughs> that's yeah that's funny but um what's one thing if you look back at it now what's one thing that you wish you uh you learned back in high school that you reckon could have helped you in your career now i think definitely the uh mental side of yeah of um uh, rugby or being a mm. professional athlete um yeah because at the time you think it's just normal and mm. you think all the thoughts that go through your head all the things you go through is just part of the journey you know but yeah. then now you see a lot of athletes uh speak out about their journey and then you yeah. think to yourself oh i've been in the same situation before mm. and you know it's okay to not be okay, you know. Mm. It's just, mm. you know, it's okay to be vulnerable and mm. it's okay to, mm. to speak out how you feel. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty chill. So, man, it's okay not to be okay. That's that gem drop for you right now, ladies and gentlemen. Nice, nice, Dago. <laughs> um, and obviously, you've played a f- uh, f- um, few seasons down at, at the. Um, at the Highlanders, and then found yourself um, in Japan uh, with Suntory. How 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 was that? Obviously, we'll touch back on Suntory. How was that um, against that difference um, in regards to rugby? But then also um, being able to like link up with other guys from like other countries, like for instance, Samu Karevi. Um, you got the chance to play with Bowden. Um, you know, I think last season, um, how was that like? Continue to like, you know, add players in and just play a, a um, I guess a, a fun kind of game of rugby. Yeah, um, I was a bit nervous at the time, especially yeah. leaving New Zealand. Um, it was a pretty hard decision to to leave yeah. New Zealand because obviously, um, I always wanted to be all black. And yeah, yeah. But, you know, there was a dream of mine. And um, to leave knowing that, you know, I, I can't try anymore and to come into Japan, I don't yeah. know what to expect. Yeah, 100. But then I came here and, honestly, it's it's been uh, the most enjoyable pre-seasons that I've had. You know, <laughs> honestly, it's, it's Yo. honestly, sometimes I wake up and like, excited. And I'm, I'm excited to get it. To <laughs> that's, that's the one, man. That's like I, I, I thought to myself, why is this happening? Because I, you know, I, just, I think back at it, it's just because I'm actually enjoying my yeah. rugby. I yeah. enjoy being here, and um, you know, meeting up with these players or playing alongside like Sami Kravy, mm. uh, played in Barrett last year, and you know, um. It's it's honestly, especially them coming from Australia, you know. Yeah, I don't know what to expect, but yeah. you know, it's 
these guys are just on a whole another level. Yeah. Um, but just to be able to play alongside them, but we've got a lot. We've got a lot of um, Japanese uh, international rugby players in our team. Oh, um, awesome! You know, to to play with them as well, and but yeah. Santa is obviously a such a um, a big club in, in Japan. Yeah. Like a, it's a it's a it's an honor to play for them. It's no. honestly, like I said, really enjoy waking up in the morning, going to training, and being able to go have fun and you know yeah, that. And but the big thing now is like the last uh, the last two years, I I didn't have my family with me. It was only me by myself. Shucks. Uh, and Japan, and but. You know, this season for them to be here, you know, it's um, it's made it a, um, a lot more special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the big thing is here. These are these are capable. There's only a certain amount of players that can play on at, um, at a time on the field. Oh, for, wow. shucks! For uh, international players. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So there's only four players that are allowed to play. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's always good because there's a lot of competition in our team. Yeah. And, um, so, so, so you guys have heaps of international players, but only four can play on a Saturday or is yeah. that what you're trying to say? So we have, I think we've got about the top of my head, I think we've got about twelve international oh, yeah. players. Yeah. And only four can start. Oh, and two yeah. can be on the bench. Oh, but okay. oh. So, wow. Shock. So the three, so we only got three internationally kept players. Mm. So our three are Damien McKenzie, mm. uh, Sam Karevi, and Sean McMahon. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So those, those are some those, big names too, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those, three, <laughs> yeah, those three, so they're, they're definitely playing on game day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's one spot left for the rest of the other nine or yeah. hope or ah, right. yeah. more to to better allow to play yeah. on that game. How's it? Um, you looking forward to playing again alongside DMAC again, bro? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, um, okay. yeah it was good. It was, brings back uh, memories to yeah. uh, NZ on the 20s. But, um, yeah, yeah awesome. he's going to be a, a massive, um, he's going to be massive for our, for our team this year. That's awesome. Yeah, he started training. He got our quarantine last week. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's been training. So mm. yeah, it's funny when um when all the All Blacks and the, the Aussies come, you, you know when they turn up and all yeah. the cameras are at their trainings. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> fresh, fresh fade yeah. again, Docs. Fresh fade again. <laughs> <laughs> not me, not me. <laughs> <laughs> These days are over. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> before the day before the game, have to. It's, Yo, we have yeah, to. Yeah. Have to, have to. <laughs> um, how long are you there for, bro? How many how many seasons you got left? I got two more seasons here this year and next season. Mm, awesome. And what's next for Tavita Lee after that, bro? What's um what's next for you? To be honest, I just I would, I, I want to stay at, uh, in Japan mm. for as long as possible. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Honestly. Really enjoy it here. Yeah. Um, enjoy my time here. Enjoy the rugby here. Mm, yeah. Enjoy the food. Enjoy everything about this country. And That's me. The only thing I, that I miss but from back home is definitely uh, friends and family. But yeah. maybe there'll be a lot more time to spend later on. But right yeah. now it's, you know, just enjoy life in Japan and try to stay here as long as possible. That's awesome, Barry. And it's mm. good to hear that you've, you've shared that. We got uh, two more questions, mate. Before we get into our quick fire questions, our f- um, this question is probably an interesting one. Um, obviously, you mentioning that um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're loving Japan at the moment, but with that um, eligibility rule, bro, um, where's where's where, where's a, where's a, where's your heart um, turning to? We've, we've got the big red. Um, T gang, T gang, Igaletahi, or or um, you're going to put your hand up for Japan, but. I, oh, for me, mate, I just want to know what your, um, I guess, your thoughts on on the um, eligibility rule. Like, is it exciting for you? Um, yeah, what 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 does it? Um, yeah, what, what do you feel? I think, like? um, the eligibility rule is 
I'm just I'm just so happy it's uh mm. it was passed because you know now now the best players in the world can actually play for their their mm. home country and yeah. if they haven't played like you know we all know Charles Pirtu as well for love mm. all of them you know they can come back and play for our little country Tonga I mean, yeah. it's just going to be massive for. Uh, not only Tonga, but just for future players, you yeah. know, when they come, when they when they come up and aspire to be rugby players, which country they want to play for? Do they want to play for mm. the All Blacks? Do they want to play for Tonga? Mm. You know, back then it was always the All Blacks because the best players yeah. are playing for the All Blacks. You yeah. know. But now Tonga can have, you know, some of these best players as well. Yeah. And you know, you could see the kids, um, kids could could grow up and be like, oh man, no, I want to be like, I want to play for Tonga. Yeah. And you know, I'd lo- I'd love to play for Tonga, and yeah. hopefully one day I'm able to play for them. But at the moment, I, c- I can't play in mean, international rugby because. If I if I play for Tonga, then uh, for my club for Suntory, I get put in the category of uh, Summer Karevi, Shun Lukman, and uh, yeah, I see, I see. And yeah. you know, like mm. I can't be competing with these guys. These guys, yeah. are <laughs> I'm staying nah, in my lane. No, just, the facts, I'm man. staying in my lane. Just, <laughs> just, you know, yeah. The humble messy, yeah, just the humble, the humble, humble messy. messy. Yeah. Cruising, just learning off these guys, man. Yo, I uh, mean, bro. But thanks for sharing on that. But uh, I think our last question before we get into our quick fire question uh, questions. What's your advice to the young 18 year old to be the lead? 18 year old to be the lead. What's your advice for him, bro? I know the 18-year-old Tavita Lee, but what's your <laughs> advice for him, bro? My advice to is just um, go out there and have fun and just make sure whatever you're doing, you know you you got a purpose to what you're doing. Yeah. And don't let the don't let the alarm like get to your head, eh? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, yes, sir. You can go either up or you can go down. And, nice. You know, just Team, whatever comes your way, kind of as blessings and just work out. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. That was that. Do, you reckon, do you reckon the young Tavita Lee will look at you now? That- <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the young Tavita Lee will probably be a little easier to look at. <laughs> Easy Laloi. <laughs> It'll probably be like K Road walking road. <laughs> Come, no on. Come on, man. Get out of here. <laughs> nah, so Togo. That's funny you talk about the eligibility rule because we talked to Peter Aki and he's strapping up for China. <laughs> he told us he's strapping up for China. So hey ducks, looking forward to seeing you in their China uniform, mate. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> um, so we're going to move on to our quick fire questions This is uh, part of the episode where we fire out five questions uh, to you But there's only one rule, you got to be honest <laughs> Gotta be honest, bro you Gotta be honest Alright, your first one If you would act in the movie What would be, and you're the main character What would be that movie? Stomp the Yard Stomp the Yard <laughs> <laughs> bro, yo, you had fit oh. there, bro. Oh. <laughs> oh, the yeah. Yeah, this What's on there? Are you like pork chop or <laughs> oh. <laughs> extra gravy? <laughs> That's me, bro. That's, bro. That's a new one, bro. That's, That's a, a new one, one bro. That's, That's me, bro. Good I answer, bro. Good answer. So Let's go. Um, the second one. Um, if you had the chance, the one chance uh, to perform at a concert with an artist, so you get to share the stage. You could rap, you know, or sing. There's one chance play to perform trumpet. with a play a trumpet. <laughs> a trumpet. Hey, oh, if you plays a trumpet, let's bro. go, docs. Yeah, man. So yeah, you're if still, you had still, one chance to be on stage, you know, <laughs> in performing or playing the trumpet or sing or rap, who, what artist or what band would you share the stage with? What artist? 
Um, oh, this old band. Then I'll think of uh, what I've been listening to. The, the Summer Lincoln. Church Band Choir. <laughs> They're playing Franklin Bird. The brass band. Christmas. <laughs> oh, see, um, wow. Chris Brown. Any NZ hey. bands? Any NZ bands? Um, if not, you're going to be in the brass band. You're gonna right. the brass We're going to put you in the brass band, boy. Just. In, Probably be of my Ikuna Youth Brass Band. Yo, there, there it is, bro. There, 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 it is. there it is. We'll take that. We'll take that. Shout out <laughs> to Ikuna Youth Brass, Brass, Brass Band. Shout out to my Ikuna Youth Brass Band. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they'll be doing uh, Christmas parades at the moment. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> tough times, eh? Tough times. Let's go. Um, any game rituals? That's your third question. What's your, um, what's, if you have any game rituals? Oh, my game rituals are just, Make sure uh, I have a fish raid for game day. Yeah. Definitely yeah. have fish raid. Fish raid, yo. It's the one, the number one thing I need is honestly because if, if you uh, if you look good, feel good, you yeah. play good. Yeah, yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, with your, you know, your career from today and in the past, you know, teams that you've been in, messiest roomy. Your Messi's roomy. Messi's roomy. Man. I would have to say. Uh, say it. Last is uh, I'd have to say uh, Martelia. <laughs> oh, Martelia. It's a messy yeah. thing, is it? It's a messy thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's the missus when back in the harbour days when we yeah. see we we're always together every single week. He was always my roomie. And yeah. Uh, uh, messy. Messy teens, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> bro. <Messy teams, laughs> um, and our last question, uh, we, we asked this question to all of our, our guests. You guys have some pretty good answers, uh, but we'll see we'll see your group. So if you would have to choose five people, uh, living or that have passed on, uh, to spend one night just to sit around on the table, have dinner. So you get to choose five people that are living or that have passed on. Who would you choose? Yeah. To have anyone. Dinner. anyone. 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 Family or celebrities or whoever. There's some pretty good ones said so far. Yeah. Man. Five people. Five people, one table, one table, and, and me and and me and Atto are the service. Yeah, we're cooking, bro. <laughs> we're cooking. Me still the service, so they are people myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, cancel the five table. Cancel, cancel the five. <laughs> the five you know, the five people wouldn't want to come. <laughs> they walk and smell the food. Oh hell nah. Hey, hell. <laughs> How dare you, bro? Every oh, time somebody's like, oh, yo, this no, guy. No, no, no. I'll, I'll probably have, um, uh, definitely have my wife. Yo, yo. Definitely just... have my wife. Then, um, four, bro. Four left. I'll have uh, my parents and I'll have her parents. Oh. Yeah. Ah, that is a messy thing, eh? <laughs> I lie because she's in the room, me. Eh? <laughs> right there. Hey, hey boys. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I'm trying to rack up the brownie points here. Eh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, Yo, get those brownie points, bro. Nah, we're gonna ruin it for you. We're gonna edit this part out. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> nah. Thank you, Heap Stocker. We appreciate your time. Thank you so Thanks, much Togo. for sharing with us. We appreciate it. Uh, and we, you know, we pray for your next part, the next part of your journey with your two years in, in Japan. And hopefully, as you said, you know, we hope that you stay there longer because it seems like that, um, you know, that place is for you. 
in this season and in this time of your journey. So we bless you, brother. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. This is a Sailor's podcast. Ta toko te vita li. Is your uso sefa. Ma toko atu. Sailor's. Thank you.